into these, especially these next handful of games here? Well, you're going to see it with that group that, you know, that played last night and we put them in a pretty strong deficit. I mean, our team, you saw it in the third period, there were, there were some hurting guys coming to the bench and then came off it today and, uh, and went light to try to give them a really good chance. But even in a light skate today, then everybody's in a good mood. Cause they're, not, they're not waiting for the, for the skate at the end of practice. So energy's been good. What's, what's been best part of the camp, though, is um, you, you always worry about that idea of complacency. We didn't win the Stanley Cup. Everybody's aware of that. But it was a, you know, an impressive thing to do. The next best thing to do is win a conference championship, and we did that. I ran the same drills for the first four days, and we can measure load on the player's body, and it was harder. They went harder. And that's just the sign, the hope that I had and that I looked for, that they would push themselves. It's not just the coach hanging over the board screaming. You know, it's, uh, it's the leadership driving the pace of everything, and that's, that's what I'm excited about. So they came back excited, but more determined and I think more mentally prepared for, for what we're going to deal with, the adversity we're going to deal with. We'll start talking about the mental part of our season next week once we get down to a smaller, more manageable number and uh, the adversity we face and how we handle it. We had a chance to speak with Will Lockwood a few minutes ago. Uh, what have you noticed? What have you learned about his game since he's come in here? Well, he's just always loved that speed, right? You can do so much with speed. Drives offense, but you can check with speed as well. And he's been consistent with it. I, I'm, what I like is that he, he's one of the handful of players in the game last night, I know they're all fatigued, but he was still able to drive at a fairly high pace. Good sign for him. So he's done some work uh, in the off season to give himself that chance. And you can tell how quick a guy can pick up the systems. And, and if a guy doesn't pick them up quickly, that, that's not necessarily a knock. It's just going to take us a little longer. But he picks it up really, really fast. So we can kind of move on to other things. A lot of defensemen. Trying to impress in camp, like we oh. talked about, Santu Kinen in an unique position, one of the few right shots here, coming off his first season in Charlotte. Early impressions of him at this year's camp. Good. I think younger, youngish defenseman, but in all that group, at least the potential upside of all of them. Like he he he's got a chance to be a good player and play in the National Hockey League. So we'll get him back into another game to give him a chance to to show what he can do. Um, but he's he's uh, he's made the coaches say, hey, what about this guy? What about this guy? Because when you look at the age, the depth, the one-way contracts, all that up, those things do matter, right? Because it's normally, I don't know, 18 of your guys are, are, are locked in. That's what you've got. Then you've got the three or four guys that are fighting for a spot. So for a young guy to come in and put himself in that mix, he's – you know, fighting, fighting with guys that would have to clear waivers, all those other little things behind the scene that give the older player the edge for a certain number of years. But he's played well enough and practiced well enough that I think he's going to put – he's pushed himself into that group. And Carter Ray, he's a guy that's kind of grown every year that he's yeah. been here, even coming off of the great year he had last year. What, what do you think he can get better at, or what do you think he can grow this year? So I'm just going to take the first part of that question and just kind of expound on it, and then – Carter Verhege is a guy that now is a product of how he got into the league. He had to scratch and claw and prove himself over and over again. So he had to figure out, how do I maximize what I have? Every player has strengths and weaknesses. So the speed, the shot, but really the tenacity on the puck are, are just great strengths. He spent a lot of time working with the other coaches on individual defensive video last year and he improved his game drastically in my mind there. So to the point now, I don't think that if you had asked me at the start of the year last year, what I think is you know, he can most improve at, it was the defensive side of the game. But he made huge improvements in that. So the growth then is becomes just consistency, right? Because the very best players are gonna give you eight out of 10, where, where their game is very, very, everybody has a bit of an aberration. You got 10 games at the end of the year you didn't really love, but the other 70 are really, really good. That's what he's pushing for now. And then a guy like Zach Dalby, who obviously plays an yep. important role with the franchise, got to some big moments in the playoffs. He was telling me about, he was, he, were, he was giving you flack about not getting into the shot lanes, and you told him, well, I'm just going to remember your playoff goal. Well, it's true. Like, he didn't get into a lane, and they scored. And... He just felt he was crushed by it, right? It just broke his heart that he couldn't do that. He, 
he couldn't he couldn't find the lane. He just he was working to get there, and the guy got it by him. It's in the back of the net, and I just, I'm not going to remember that. I'm not. I'm going to remember the shot. He worked both sides. He hit the slot twice, worked his ass off on that shift, and then we're down a goal. Ties at 4-4, 13-23 maybe on the clock. That's what I remember, Zach Dalpy. I mean, he's relentless in his, his approach on the ice. He's got a big smile on his face. He's at an age where he truly, those players truly appreciate the every day at the rink. He's getting old, like all of us. Um, that's what I remember about him. Matt Samuskevich is one of the last guys on the ice most of the time. Like yeah. I saw during camp, even after you ran him that hard, he yeah. was getting that one-on-one -on -one work with Patrick Hornquist. I mean, what's it show you with a guy like that? Just keep on working and working on him. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you another story going back before that. So with, when we sign these players, uh, there are times where part of being able to sign the player out of college um, is they they, uh, they want to come up and spend hang out with the big big guys, right? They, they sign me, bring me in, and, and maybe you get them into a game at the end of the year, and that burns a year of their entry level. All those good things. And he said, I just want to play. I'll go to Charlotte. I just want to play. So that's the first big tell on a guy that he's a gamer. He's just a hockey player. His work ethic is really, really good. He's just going to, this, this young man has got NHL hands and NHL vision. When he gets to the NHL, I don't know if it's a week from now, a year, I don't know. We'll watch him. We'll be protective of his development. Um, but if you work that hard, even the, the progress that he made in his fitness level from the summer to now. So these young men have so much room to grow and, and, and you know, how big their tank gets, how strong they get, all those kind of things. But he worked hard at it. Then he stays on the ice all the time. So I just know he's going to get better. And some of the parts of his, uh, parts of him right now are NHL ready. So I have complete faith that the other parts will continue. It can't be easy. Like when you talk about you only have like a handful of open positions for guys. Yeah. Different roles. When you weigh like a guy like Brett Ritchie versus a guy like Maggie Samusevich, just in yeah. terms of veteran versus rookie. Right. You also have to take into account not just how they're looking, but the potential role that they'll be filling. Like, you don't want a guy who's used to playing top minutes yeah. on, like, a fourth line role. Right. So I don't compare those two players. They would never – you're 100% right in the, in the way you phrased it because that's the way it will look. But these are completely different points in their career. You're 100% right. For me, a very young, skilled player has to work – has to be able to play in your top nine or he shouldn't play there because we need him at a certain minute level to get the experience that he's going to need to play there for real. So, and what I mean by permanently is a better word. So those two, those two guys are not in competition at all. The, uh, the younger, unwaverable players, or waverable players that don't have to be picked, don't have to be, can't be claimed is what I'm trying to say. I'm beating it to death this morning. I just got off the plane at two. Um, those players have to play meaningful minutes on your NHL team or they need to be in the minors playing. So we don't really pick necessarily one guy over another in those those remaining spots. We we pick situations. Thank you. Okay guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.